This is a truly Australian city, friendly but also cosmopolitan. People of many nations live here, from England, Italy, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, Holland. In fact, well over 30 different European nationalities are represented in the city's population. Australians are not supposed to show any great national emotion, but I found this not to be the case when I attended a naturalisation ceremony where over 100 migrants took full Australian citizenship. A simple ceremony, but ever so sincere, with the mayor of the city, assisted by the town clerk, presenting each new citizen with their certificates. A ceremony where a true spirit of fellowship prevails. A spirit that exists in the whole community, I found. Settling into the way of life of this new country is best achieved by the children. A happiness and good fellowship exists among the young regardless of their birthplace. An example that we older folk would do well to follow perhaps. The educational pattern is the same at both the steel cities of Australia. In fact, I understand education is very similar throughout the whole country. Excellent school buildings, kindergarten, primary and secondary, where the children learn not only about Australia, but overseas countries as well. At both Newcastle and Wollongong are large technical colleges, university colleges and teachers colleges. You can see you really want for nothing as far as education for your children is concerned. The city of Wollongong is on a coastal strip of land between the mountains and the sea. At every turn of the coastline are surfing beaches and many swimming pools. Along the mountain ranges are picnic spots, accessible either by walking or by car. A near perfect blending of bushland and sea. Housing, perhaps the most important aspect of life in a new country, is still a problem, but a problem that's being beaten. There are hostels where newcomers like me can stop, and this allows one to look around, find your bearings and plan for the future. It doesn't take long if you have a determination to succeed. In both steel towns, men today are clearing their own land, digging foundations for their homes. You have to save money to pay a deposit for land in a house, and the balance can be obtained from a cooperative society or a bank, and you can pay the money back over many years. This is the best way, much better than just paying rent because you're buying your future home. Here's a fair example. This man is typical of many. He came to Australia with his wife and one child just on ten years ago, with no money to speak of, but by hard work and saving, he has today his own home. Well, he's paying it off. Being a good worker in the steel industry with a steady income, he was able to arrange for a loan from a building society. Now today, he has three children, a lovely home, a car, in fact, most of the essential things that help make enjoyable living. None of them have been obtained easily, but only by hard work, sacrifice, and a will to succeed. The three essentials for anybody who is taking up a new life, and plenty of people have done just this. In the steel cities, there's plenty of relaxation too, regardless of the way you like to relax. Hotels and clubs provide good entertainment. There are clubs of all descriptions, social, sports, music, and many others. Here there's a complete mixing of people, regardless of race or creed. And all these clubs are glad of new members. We'd all heard of Australia as a land of sunshine, and Australians as a people who love outdoor life. Well, it does rain sometimes, and not all Australians are 100% outdoor types, but I found that the description is basically true. After all, Australia has an excellent temperate climate. On the beaches of the steel towns, anyone from anywhere can have good, clean fun. The surf clubs that do such a mighty job and save the inexperienced surfer from danger and possible drowning run competitions, they're called surf carnivals, where the club members are able to perfect their life-saving techniques and provide the public with excellent and sometimes exciting entertainment. In fact, as I watched one carnival, it made me think how it typified the Australian way of life.
I was interested to find a great similarity between Wollongong and Newcastle in more ways than one. You could almost call them twin cities, for just south of the Port Kembla Steel Works is Lake Illawarra, a large placid stretch of water where those who like the thrill of speedboat racing or the art of water skiing can spend many an hour at their sport. Another fact of interest is that all the football codes are played with remarkable vigour. There are even teams whose members are all migrants. But if the weather is wet or fine, you can take into yourself and your family, if you like, to modern and well-conducted ten-pin bowling alleys, where many of the local champions are people from the Northern Hemisphere, 